Hi, my name is Lisa Lim and I'm a composer. I was born in Perth in WA and I grew up in Brunei, which is in Southeast Asia, and also in Melbourne. Like many kids, I had piano lessons and I was a rather reluctant student. And it wasn't until I was 12 and starting to learn violin at high school that I really became switched on to music. And I went to a high school in Melbourne with a really great music program called uh, PLC. And that's what really set me on the path to becoming a composer. One of the things that happened to me when I was 12 was that I became really switched on to sound, really listening to noises in the environment and hearing them as colours and pictures, as melodies, shapes and rhythms. And painters have also talked about this sense in which the visual perception is so heightened that you don't see the world as objects, but as colours and lights and forms. And so at that age, at 12, the world kind of came alive for me as sound and through sound. And so it, it was, as John Cage says, anything you can hear is music. In this video series, The Speak Percussion, we're going to show you some of the ways in which you can musicalize the world by really paying attention to sound and exploring the inequalities of it. And so the questions to start off with is, how can a really simple and ordinary object come to life as a musical instrument? For instance, how can a Coke can become an instrument? How can you make a simple thing like this, a wood block, sing? So we're going to explore some of these instruments and together with Eugene and Kaylee, build up a kind of vocabulary, uh, make a list of their possibilities. And it's by listening very carefully to uh, the things that come out of that experimentation that we build up a catalogue of sounds with which to compose with. And that's the way in which we can begin to transform something that is very simple and seemingly ordinary into something very magical. So, you know, how do you take a Coke can and turn it into a musical instrument? What about this? This is a, a $2 wood, wood block. How do you make something like this sing? What else have I got here? A plastic bag. And percussionists are always looking for objects to, to turn into instruments. So um, there's, there's these ordinary everyday objects and then there's a kind of whole array of instruments here as well. And obviously you can tap on any surface, you can tap a rhythm on any surface, um, you can make a sound effect with anything. But I think what's really interesting is to, to go deeper, to really experiment with a whole range of sounds, to, to milk as much as possible from the one object. And through that, to start to create a kind of musical language, a vocabulary. And that's what we're going to do in this session. So Eugene and Kaylee are joining us here. And they're going to just try out some stuff, I think, first with the simple woodblock. So what have we got? Well, we've got a whole range of different woodblocks, starting from piccolo, you know, very, very high-pitched, small woodblocks, all the way through to quite big wood blocks. Could we hear some of those? Yeah. What are the differences in sounds? This is a piccolo wood block. Okay. Very high pitch. And then... Okay, do you want to just move around just the, the table so we can hear the diff... Oh, that's a really high one, yeah. Mm. Then the low one. Okay, but you know what? That's, that's kind of a bit easy. Let's just work with one wood block. So if we choose one, this is the specimen, um, and see, can we actually make a scale of sounds out of this one instrument? So, you know, just like a, a conventional musical instrument, a piano or a violin, you can play scales or pitches up and down. Let's see if we can also make a scale of sounds from maybe from high to low or from dark to light or rough to smooth. And I think this thing of making a scale, organising sounds into a continuum is really interesting because that's a one way in which you can compare sounds and it's a really great resource for composition. So I don't know, what kind of beaters are there that can be used on this? 
Well, we've got everything from very hard mallets all the way through to soft, and then a whole array of other sound effects that we can use. But probably, mm -hmm. you know, a normal, a conventional starting point would be something like this, which is a plastic medium. Mm -hmm. Let's hear it. Yeah. Okay, and what about the other end? Does that make a sound? Okay, yeah. So one's a really dense, uh, you know, kind of heavy, um, sharp sound. The other one is really light and yeah. kind of fluffy, a little bit fluffy. But when I heard you say the word scale leader yeah. and the yeah. colour variation, I suddenly started to think about even with the same pair of sticks mm -hmm. moving across the surface. Okay. So most of the time when you play a woodblock, it's sort of towards the mouth, mm -hmm. the block here. But suddenly if we were to start on the opposite edge or something. Yeah. And then cool. move across, yeah. there's a real colour. Yeah. I just maybe we'll just start to make a list of some of these things so we can we can remember them. I'm just going to move this. So maybe a good way is to is to just draw a picture of the woodblock. This is the aerial view. Ugh. So what you did there, Eugene, was that you were tapping the woodblock and moving from here to there, and then back again. So that might be quite a good notation to show the changing colour of uh, this woodblock. And then the other thing we already did was the, the kind of beta. So something like this might show that you're playing the surface with the head of the stick. Something like this might show that you're using the light rattan um, stick part of the beta. So they've really got three elements there. You've got the sounds you can get with the beta um, either side of it, and you've got positions on the woodblock. So here we've just made notes about the, the beaters used, the, the head of the beater, the stick of the beater, and also we've got a little diagram of the woodblock showing the movement across the instrument to get the different colours. And so, Eugene, how fast can you play on that oh, woodblock? Probably about this fast. Okay, that's with two sticks. How fast can you play with one? Can you do a tremolo with the two sticks? Just in one hand? Yeah. Yep, I can. So this woodblock is a little bit harder to do than some of the others, but for example, one option is that you hold the stick like this and then you kind of you roll in that fashion. Mm -hmm. um, another option is that you use the flexible handle to do a kind of a ricochet type of roll, like... Oh, that's beautiful. Which you can also then change the colour as you move up the, up the shaft of the stick, so for example... And that's just by using the old ruler on the edge of the table type of feel by kind of bouncing. That's, bouncing. that's so beautiful. I love that. Yeah, so changing the, the length of the, um, the contact point with the, with the wood block. And so you could, show the, the, you could show the changing contact point. So for instance, if you had a line like this showing the, the bit nearest the, um, the head of the beater and this towards the end, you could show movement like that, up and down. And so maybe to show that it's fast, you can have some lines like that. Does that work? Right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then I could either do roll like this. Or do the kind of buzzing roll that we did before, which is... Okay, so there's, there's roll and there's buzz. Okay, so that's already kind of quite a lot of information just on this woodblock. Actually, I've learned something I didn't know before about the woodblock just then, so about that buzzing roll, and I'm going to use it in my next piece. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so that's, that's the beginning of this kind of vocabulary. Let's try a different um, implement. How about the bow? I mean, one of the things about the beater is that it gives you a very precise attack point. You know, this is your classic percussion sound, yeah? It, it just, it, it's, it's a strike um, and it punctuates, you know, the, 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 the silence, let's say. Um, and one of the, um, the challenges, I think, and one of the interesting challenges of percussion is like, how do you make it more sustained? You know, how do you get the sound to keep going? And so what about this bow? Could that be one way of doing it? Definitely. 
Okay, wow, that's really beautiful. I mean, it's really mysterious, it's very soft. It's hard to hear. I mean, what, what, how else could you do it so it could become more audible? You can control the volume of the sound partly through the pressure and mm -hmm. also through the angle you approach the wood. Okay. So. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so pressure gives you the, the changes, just, just as it does on a violin. So just thinking about, again, symbols, maybe you could draw a sort of bow, kind of little drawing of a bow to show that you're using a bow. Um, there's, this, there's this down and up, you know, kind of exhale, inhale, that's, that's really beautiful. And um, you could make up symbols for that. So the, the actual sound you could represent with maybe something like this. A diamond shape to show that it's kind of airy. It's airy. It's breathy. You can breathe in and out. So you could write in and out, or you could just have, I don't know, up and down, something like that. Um, and I think this is this is where it's quite interesting in terms of. Um, starting to write things down. There's something special about notation, writing things down, because it's a form of memory, but there's a sort of way in which what you have on the page and your memory starts to talk to each other and it starts to build up more, more resonance, more ideas. And this for me is the magic of notation. So for instance, even just this, writing breathy, writing in and out, I think about the way in which a larger piece of music can be um, marked by breath. So you can imagine there's something happening. Okay, let's say we're, we're, we have Eugene on beaters, you know, and I'm just going to re represent loud sounds with larger, you know, kind of larger round circles like this and softer things. in descending, descending shapes. And you can make things go faster by putting them close, more closely. Um, we've got this, okay, let's have a bit of this buzz roll business. Okay, so that's the, so here we are, here's the beta. Here's the stick. And then we're gonna have a bit of this buzz going up and down, different, different kinds of angles. Then we're going to have these, we're going to mark the phrasing of it with the, with the bow. So you can imagine here you have this breathing out, breathing in, whoops, maybe like that. So I've combined the two symbols. I'm not sure how long they go like that. And then here, after the, at the end of the buzz, maybe something uh, breathing in, long breath in and a breath out. So what I'm showing you here is, is just the way in which the exploration of sounds and starting to get a few things on the paper starts to suggest the musical shape kind of, you know, it's, it's like the, the, the notation is talking to you and the instruments are talking to you. Yeah, you're not just imposing something onto the, um, you know, making music isn't just thinking it up and imposing it. It's like listening for a dialogue with whatever's around, which can be the instrument, which can be notation, can be a whole bunch of things. But um, so, yeah, I've just made a little, tiny little piece just from these elements we've talked about. Shall we, shall we play this? <laughs>
That was so beautiful. Thank <laughs> you. Okay, next, next. Do you want to hold one as well? Yeah, you've got the hairbrush as well. Okay, so this is, this is one of my absolutely favourite implements, the RAS stick. So what is it? <laughs> Well, it's really just a stick that has these serrated teeth along it. So the great thing about this is, believe it or not, Lisa, we made these for a piece of yours. Okay. <laughs> so we have 12 pairs of these for another big percussion work um, called City of Falling Angels. But um, you can make your own as we did, mm -hmm. or you can buy them, like, yep. like normal drum kit sticks with um, uh, ridges. Okay, so it's just dowel yeah. with these kind of, yeah. These grooves, grooves. Out of them. Yeah, yeah, right. The grooves can be as deep or as wide as mm -hmm. you like, really. Okay, what does it sound like? Okay, wow. So there's a lot of variation, isn't there? You can really get um, from the softest to the loudest sounds. You can really vary the speed of them, um, of the stick. Uh, what I what I love about the rustic is the way it brings together the beta and the bow. So if you if you pick up the the beta and the bow, so you've got the you've got the attack point at each ridge, and you've got this you know sustain this this kind of resonating sort of thing, which gives you the continuity of the sound, all in one thing. So for me, this is the beginning of the woodblock singing. When you play it with the rasp, it's like the lyrical voice of the woodblock comes out, but then it's, it's also got this roughness. It's also got this um, animal quality. You know, it's like insects and frogs. And I think there's no accident that you've got instruments like the, the, these little frog blocks, which are kind of the same idea. I mean, they've got these ridges on them and you get this, this beautiful ugh, serrated sound, croaking sound. And that's a sound that I actually used in um, an opera I wrote called The Navigator. There's a whole section where the whole orchestra picks up one of these, different sizes. So you get little ones and big ones. And you've got this chorus of croaking that... Yeah, so you have... I don't know, for me, there's the, 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 the really simple concept, which is it's a, wood of, a block of wood, it resonates, but then by changing the ways in which you play it, it starts to take on different personalities. And then it can be, it can be a frog, you know, it can become, uh, and, and we'll see later, it be, can become like a violin, it can become perhaps like a trumpet. So it's a, it's a big journey from this to, you know, a whole world of, of music making. Okay, so a practical exercise that you can try um, is to take an object, it could be a wood block, it could be a Coke can, it could even be a plastic bag, and see what you can get, get out of it. Make a list of the possibilities, start with some simple notations, and then from that, generate ideas in order to create a simple composition. So we're going from the something very simple, the kernel of something to something more complex.